Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to Forex Boat Trading Academy. Today's YouTube video tutorial, we're going to cover the Forex Volume Indicator in MetaTrader 4 and why you should use it. So trading volume is a very interesting topic. Uh, it comes up you know, more often than I think a lot of traders realize, especially traders who are who have exclusively traded the forex market and what i usually say in those situations is it makes a lot of sense that that's the case because the liquidity in the fx market is so much greater uh than that than it is in the stock market i think uh you know the amount of volume conducted on the new york stock exchange in one full year is handled in the foreign exchange market in two weeks just to give you some perspective of how liquid the FX market is. And when you're studying technical analysis, which we've done other tutorials on, um, liquidity is a big part of trusting the charts, uh, trusting your indicators, trusting your setups. Uh, you really need liquidity, deep liquidity to be a part of that. And so when you tell a stock trader that they actually can get volume in the foreign exchange market, it really excites them because it's a, for many such traders, it's bridging a gap between a market that they really know and might have known for years or decades uh, to a market that might be newer to them. And so this topic is actually quite important, I think, for everyone, but uh, you know, especially traders who are coming from other markets and are used to using volume. Now, what I will say is, is that uh, the volume indicators you find in the FX market, you know, you have to respect the fact that we're not trading stocks, we're trading foreign currencies, and it is an over-the-counter market, right? FX doesn't have a central exchange. And so we're gonna talk about this a little bit in one of in one of our topics today, but you have to remember that, and you have to remember that uh, order flow in the foreign exchange market can be coming from multiple different directions. We have many different participants in the foreign exchange market. Of course, there's us as retail traders, uh, but there's also banks, hedge funds, corporations, exchanging currencies. And so uh, <clears throat> for those reasons, volume is very important to know. And uh, many of the same, I think, uh, setups or rationales that you have behind looking at volume in other markets hold true here also. And so we're gonna take a look today at how we can maximize basically the opportunities that are ahead of us if we're using for example the volume trading tool that's available in metatrader 4 uh, which we're going to take a look at in a little bit so if we're going to break down the topics here today how we would rank them and basically uh you know basically saying what, what value does the volume the forex volume indicator give you these are basically i think the key benefits that you would receive in really understanding how to use the volume indicator. The first one is confirmation of dissipating or accelerating momentum, right? Uh, you know, one of my favorite phrases in trading is question everything, right? And so that means, uh, quite, you know, a setup that you see that you feel super confident about, you should be questioning it in some way. A trade that you're in, that you're you know you're up 100 pips you know there should be some thing in the back of your mind that makes you question the longevity of that trade and really what that what that phrase is basically saying to you is uh not that you should second guess yourself in certain trades but more so that you shouldn't get too comfortable with a certain setup and it's basically telling you the markets are ever changing right circumstances are ever changing the dynamics of the market or the currency pair that you're looking at are ever changing. And we're going to look at a currency pair today uh, in the US dollar, Canadian dollar, that really fits that description. Uh, and any of you who have been trading the US dollar, Canadian dollar lately might have a good idea of what I'm talking about. And so, volume indicator is really helpful at helping you determine uh, whether a currency pair that's perhaps trending in a certain direction, will that extend? Will there be continuation or is the momentum dissipating, in which case a reversal might be coming up? Uh, the volume indicator goes a long way 
in helping you see that, okay? Uh, it also, which is a similar point, it's an excellent trigger indicator in a heavily risk on or risk off environment. When we say trigger indicator, basically an indicator that will enable you to make a confident decision to pull the trigger on a trade at a certain point in time. So, you know, other times we're using, you know, people will see pairs sitting around Fibonacci retracement levels uh, or, you know, some significant support or resistance levels that are, that are determined by some technical formation, <clears throat> but they might be waiting for a certain Japanese candlestick pattern perhaps to, to, to show itself before, uh, before getting into the trade. What we're going to actually see today, when we look at U.S. dollar, Canadian dollar, why, why the volume indicator, in our view, is even more powerful than, uh, you know, for example, the Japanese candlestick setup, which so many people put a lot of weight in, um, understandably. And so in these risk on or risk off environments, you know, that the market so far, you know, we're basically almost halfway through 2020. And we've seen these flips from uh, a steep risk on environment to a steep risk off environment and being able to observe and predict with a fair amount of accuracy when we're moving from one to the other uh, or when one is solidly in continuation and you can see that clearly it's a really big opportunity to make money because there's no shortage of volatility right now right so uh, volatility is higher now so far in 2020 than we've seen in several years. And so uh, great opportunity exists, but we also have to manage our risk. And the volume indicator will help us take advantage of the upside that's in front of us here while limiting the downside risk. A lot of people lately have been talking about weekend gaps, right? Because a, lo a, lo a lot of this is fundamental traders. Um, you know, but some, you know, many of them are also uh, technical traders, but traders are seeing that the market is really volatile at the moment. And when they're in a trade on Friday, for example, as you know, I've seen myself at certain times, they're wondering, should I stay in this trade? You know, should I hang in this trade? Because, you know, I'm up 50 pips, let's say. And, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, it's quietest before the storm, right? And we've seen in pairs like dollar CAD, we've seen big moves happen between Friday and Monday. And it's almost as if, um, you know, dealers in the market, bank dealers, hedge fund dealers also see the same thing. And it's the patients, it's the patient traders that are really going to reap the rewards from those types of opportunities. And we just had one actually this past weekend, which we're going to take a look at. So the volume indicator can help you as you're as you're proceeding towards the end of the week to help make a decision as to should I hang in this trade? Now, uh, don't get me wrong. Over the course of my own trading career, it's been a small percentage of the time that I've actually stayed in trades over the weekend. It's not something that I do actively. However, uh, if the opportunity presents itself and things line up correctly and you know, the volume indicator, for example, is telling me that uh, there could be a big reward on the other side of staying in this trade, then it's an opportunity worth considering and one that I've personally done. So the final point that we're going to talk about, which I think will really uh, catch the eye and, and make a lot of people happy, is catching both trend and counter trend moves, right, uh, or swings, because that's what so many traders want to do. So many traders that I talk to, at least, you know, want to be able to uh, catch every move, right? What we, you know, we know that that's uh, not possible, right? So traders that tend to try to catch every swing that they see on an hourly or four hour chart are probably going to wind up paying more spreads than really doing anything else and trying to fight themselves to get back to break even over and over and over again. Uh, and it's only a matter of time before a trader tends to realize that. But there's something to be said for uh, the volume indicator and its ability to help you catch swings in both directions is really the point to take home here. It's not that you should be trying to catch every single swing, right? So if you're looking at an hourly, a four-hour chart, and you're you know you're just waiting to flip a you know flip a trade repeatedly. That's, that's not really what we're talking about here because that's not going to be effective. 
However, uh, the volume indicator will allow you to take advantage of movement both with the trend and counter trend, okay? More so than I think some other indicators in the market. So let's go a little deeper. Uh, confirmation of dissipating or accelerating momentum. So this is what our first key benefit of the volume indicator. Now I have MetaTrader 4 up here. Okay. And as I mentioned, we're going to look at dollar CAD. So I have a dollar CAD daily chart up here, which is a really fascinating chart right now because uh, as you can see, we had a big run up in dollar CAD going back several weeks ago where dollar CAD uh, touched just above 140, uh, nearly 147, we got up to. And coincidentally, I actually know a lot of Canadian traders. Um, you know, I've worked you know, in the industry for almost 20 years. And um, over that time, I've just come to communicate with so many traders from Canada, many from the Toronto area. And I can tell you that and this is really where, you know, uh, we recently did a topic on fundamentals and technicals. And I can tell you that after this big move up in dollar CAD, fundamentally, there was a lot of pessimism. And if you asked at least any of the Canadian traders that I spoke to during that stretch of time, the outlook was bleak. It was dismal. I mean, most traders I thought, uh, you know, most players that I spoke to thought that dollar CAD was going to test 150 during this run up. Okay. Part of that, I think, perhaps stems back to 2015, which, if you were looking at dollar CAD then, it did also have a similar run uh, and it actually maintained levels above 140 uh, more consistently than it did this time around. So perhaps there was some recent memory uh, affecting that, that uh, belief uh, in, in what dollar CAD was going to do. But as I said in the beginning of the webinar, or excuse me, the beginning, is uh, we said trust nothing or trust, you know, don't trust every single move. Uh, and the, the idea there, again, is, uh, you know, you really should question every move. So when dollar CAD ran up here in this fashion, okay, yes, if you were on the right side of that dollar CAD run up, fantastic. And I, I was able to catch a portion of this move, not all of it. Uh, and the momentum was very, uh, very strong. And that's actually why we're going to look at this period of time as well. Also, because this ties directly into our topic of today, which is volume and volume indicators. Now, what happens up in places like this is uh, fear of missing out, right? You know, there can be a whole tutorial dedicated to the topic of chasing trades and its relationship to the fear of missing out. And I can tell you there at these levels, there were a whole lot of buyers right above 144 for dollar CAD. The problem was is that you had a whole lot of existing long traders exiting their positions, exiting their long, the long positions they might've been holding from 135 or 138 or 140. Now, there was a lot of traders already sitting on big profits. And you, as a trader, you have to think about that when you're trying to get in at a place like this level. I know it's not, it's easier said than done because you feel like there might be, you know, more life to this move. But you're basically buying at a level where uh, a lot of traders could be exiting long positions. And what that means is this gets into order flow. And that's why I'm bringing it up because order flow relates directly to trading volume which we're going to look at this uh green and red bar chart of volume at the bottom here in a second but basically what you have to anticipate is that and this goes back to the question everything idea is that if a lot of the existing long traders exit their trades here there can be a wave of selling pressure and it can come pretty fiercely and pretty quickly and you don't know when that's right around the corner necessarily so how could we tell that that was coming? Well, uh, let's go down and start. And, and now let's get into a little bit about the volume indicator itself. Because, again, Forex is an over-the-counter market. It's not exchange traded. So the volume that you're seeing on MetaTrader 4 is the volume that your broker is showing on their platform. So, you know, if you're trading with a large broker 
it's a very good sample. It's a very good proxy for the overall market. Okay. But, you know, let's take a look. Now, as we got to this spike here in dollar CAD up to just, just about 147, you can see volume on the long side spiking as well. And that makes sense. I mean, uh, what do you see oftentimes during such moves, either in this, either with the dollar CAD or with any other instrument, really, when you see such a spike, is some type of irrational exuberance and you see a flood. And there's a lot of this big, this volume, this long, green candle in the volume side tells you that there was a spike on the buyer side of volume. And what that tells me is there was a fear of missing out uh, component to that move. And so momentarily, or for a brief period of time, it did accentuate that surge, right? Uh, but what happened here? Essentially, buyers exhausted themselves in the market. And when you look at the volume indicator, I think this is one of the more helpful tips that you can take away from this tutorial is that when you see a spike that is this severe, okay, and we had a couple of them here in dollar CAD in the volume indicator. When you see a spike that's severe, what that should immediately, the bells that should go off in your head when you see that is, is this sustainable? Like is such a volume, because the answer is almost certainly not. You know, buyers have exhausted themselves, which in any market, in any instrument, presents the best opportunity you could possibly ask for for sellers to come in. You've created an environment that is ripe for selling because you have, as we said a few minutes ago, existing long traders exiting their trades, taking profits at price levels where it makes a lot of sense to take profits. And then this volume, you, you already know that without even looking at a volume indicator, but then you pull, you, you factor this in also, you see this spike, which again, this is synonymous with buyers going all out, fear of missing out, piling in, irrational exuberance, piling in, creating this huge spike. It's not sustainable. It's not sustainable and it's creating an opportunity. And you can see the volume on the seller side then starts to, starts to come in and it, it pulls back. You can see we have three consecutive down uh, bars on the volume side. So essentially somebody who saw this spike in the, in, on the, on, at this moment in time, a dollar CAD, even if you weren't able to get short precisely at that time, which correlates to right here, which obviously would have been a fantastic time to get short, uh, not to mention you had a bit of a long-legged doji there, which, if you trust that uh, candlestick, would also be an indi indication that selling is a good time to probably get to sell. But that aside, even if you were going to wait for uh, a drop in volume or on the on the buy side a a a, a fall off in the in the in the buying pressure, which was almost certain to come, you still were being presented around here with not unfavorable selling prices given where we are today you would have had to handle a couple uh a couple jumps okay again we're looking at a daily chart here uh but this really was and we're we looked at dollar cad because you know this gets to our one of our other points which i'm going to jump back to the presentation here briefly which is the point about being an excellent trigger indicator, the volume indicator being an excellent trigger indicator in heavily risk on or risk off environments, okay? Currencies like the Canadian dollar and the Australian dollar are, you know, people will call them different things. You, know, you can call them commodity currencies, which certainly is true, but I also refer to them, especially in environments like this, uh, risk on currencies. They're currencies that you want to buy when the market is embracing risk. And if you see what's happening in the stock market right now, we just recently had the Dow uh, run past 25,000 to the upside with with you know fair amount of ease. Uh, the stock market right now 
uh, as we enter, you know, today is June 1st, 2020. So as we enter June, the stock market is basically showing uh, signs of uh, attempting, perhaps at least attempting a V-shaped move, a V-shaped recovery move, uh, you know, from the, the COVID-19, uh, you know, downswing that we had recently. And so we are in a risk on environment right now. Uh, despite some people being surprised by that, but the charts don't lie and the market prices don't lie. And right now there is a continual embracement of risk as we enter June. So let's, why does that factor into our charts? Because if we fast forward to today, and this gets into our next point about weekend gaps, at the end of last week, you can see here we had, well, early in the week, Monday, Tuesday, the Canadian dollar made a run. Okay, the Canadian dollar made a run. Dollar CAD broke below uh, some support here. This was a triple bottom. You know, you can see a fairly clean triple bottom formed there on the daily chart. And on Friday, dollar CAD made an attempt to break it now it's quite humorous to me actually because i got a few messages on on friday again from traders that i know in canada saying you know what's uh what do you think's happening here dan is this the beginning of a canadian of a sustained canadian dollar run because you know like i said uh, even traders in canada who know that canadian dollar is a risk on currency uh you know, there's still that kind of inherent pessimism or disbelief that there that the Canadian dollar can come back from where it was because you know it did hang out up here around 140 for a long enough period of time that you know the argument fundamentally could have been made that uh, a reversal downwards was unlikely. But again, the charts don't lie, and a trader and I'll mention stocks again because. Somebody coming to the currency market from the stock market might have had an advantage here when looking at dollar CAD that that an exclusively an exclusive currency trader might not have seen, which is precisely what I just mentioned. And uh, basically, somebody who's observing what's happening in the stock market day in and day out, which you know we do and I do because I do want to see. Uh, you know, I'm I'm you know basically in the London time zone for the most part. I pay attention to what's happening with the European equity indices every day. I want to see what is the risk sentiment in the market. Is it on? Is it off? Is it a mix? You know, are all of the European indices up right now? Is the DAX up? Is the CAC 40 up? Uh, you know, what is happening with the FTSE? You know, how are they doing in relationship to each other? Because that'll tell you very early in the day, well before the U.S. stock market opens. Uh, whether we're for the most part in a risk on or a risk off environment. And a trader who was holding dollar cat at the end of last week basically saw for the most part, last week was a stupendous week for the stock market. Friday was kind of quiet, but you know we said there's always a quiet before the storm. And a trader who had kind of the fortitude and uh, you know necessarily wasn't over leveraged, would be taking actually a well-educated risk at holding dollar cat short over this past weekend. And had they done that, they would have been rewarded because dollar cat continued to fall well into, uh, you know, when, when the markets opened uh, Sunday, 5 p.m. New York time, dollar cat, we saw plunged. And the reward was over 100 pips, uh, which for a weekend move, that's not bad. It's, ni it's nice to, you know, come into the market with that with that waiting for you. Now, you know, that goes back to this point about volume is a weekend gap trader's friend because, uh, you know, had a trader been looking at volume beforehand and seeing that the market was getting quiet, a lot of times, especially for a pair like dollar cat, because quite frankly, this actually happened to dollar cat in the opposite direction a couple months ago where Dollar CAD gapped upwards, actually, it was almost a 200 pip move. And so we're talking about Dollar CAD today because it fits this, this topic really well, but it's worth remembering this pair because uh, it does, you know, it, you do see it. You do see it often enough 
uh, where a pair like Dollar Cad, if you see a quiet Friday after a big run, after you know Dollar Cad had a big run, it can continue and it can continue quickly. And um, you know, for for this particular topic of volume being a, a weekend gap trader's friend, I mean, it played to perfection. It played to perfection this past weekend. Uh, you know, you might have been cautious. You know, with these dojis hanging out here, you can see these like three dojis here hanging out. That might have given you a little caution. But side note, my feeling about dojis is that if the dojis continue anything past a double doji, you know, a double doji can be a sign of a reversal, as you know, we most of us know if we're if we're looking at in Japanese candlestick indicators. The double doji you have to watch out for because you can see a reversal. But because the double doji and it actually turned into a triple doji because it was hanging out below support below this daily support we can see this doji forming the likelihood of the reversal to me got less and less and the fact that the reversal didn't happen before the end of the week and we finished the week here it pointed to a further move downward uh and if we look at the volumes okay which is one of the critical elements here that and why we're talking about it you can see that we got kind of this quiet formation again a bit of a spike of course nothing as severe as this uh that we we're talking about a few minutes ago but it was enough of a spike to tell me okay three consecutive increasing buying candles or buying bars here on the volume indicator that volume the, the buying side was kind of exhausted it seemed like you know it put up a fight it put up a fight for a while here you know we had this, like we said we had this triple bottom uh you know it, it put up a fight but you, you, you know in hindsight everything is so clear right i mean that's what can be sometimes so frustrating about trading until we you know uh until we get to a certain point but at 141 you know it struggled this was a telltale sign here when dollar cat struggled to get back to 141 that should have been a tip-off you know because it's basically like a climber you know trying to get to the top of a mountain uh you know without a rope and they're able to get up once, they're able to get up twice, they're able to get up three times, they come back down. The fourth attempt, you know, they run out of steam. They just don't have it, uh, you know, and it's kind of, it's very visual in that sense. But now with this, the way this weekend closed on Friday and with these candles teetering out like this, it's not that surprising that dollar CAD continued to fall coming into Monday's trading session. And so this is where we talk about the volume indicator being a weekend gap trader's friend because uh if you can see that in the future you can see the payoff you can get i mean it's monday right now i mean we're only a couple hours into the uh, the, the new york trading session right now on monday and look how much of a move dollar cad has already made uh here on monday so uh it's really relevant to what's happening in the market right now and so to wrap up on this point about uh, the volume indicator you know, it is it is worth noting that you can catch trends both with the trend and counter trend. I mean, right now, dollar CAD is forming a reversal. So you could make the argument that uh, we're really in a counter trend move right now, uh, a counter swing uh, with dollar CAD. Now, the, um, you know, the grain of salt that I would take with this, you know, as I, I just want to repeat what I said earlier, which is I wouldn't use the volume indicator to try to catch every single move because what that will try to do or every single swing excuse me because that will most likely lead to you taking more trades than you should be taking or over trading and paying more spreads than you probably want to pay uh and so this point is relevant when this when the volume indicator really has for example the type of spike that we saw earlier so when you see something like this where we have a really big spike or when you see something like we saw this weekend where you had three consecutive upward bars, but then you know that's telling you it's petering out. It's it's exhausting. You know, these are opportunities. Whether the market's on, um, you know, telling you to buy or to sell, you should be willing to be go either direction uh, in our view because the volume indicator is showing that, and so it does open up the door for both long and short opportunities in the same instrument. And so with that. We're just about done with today's topic for the webinar. I just wanted to leave you with a final point regarding the volume indicator analysis, which is uh, the volume indicator enables you to question every market move intelligently and let the market tip you off before acting, right? 
And that's, if there's anything that you should take away from today's tutorial, I think is, uh, you know, because we all question moves in the market every day, right? We all see swings that sometimes appear to come out of nowhere. Uh, you know, I know I do. And so, but what I've discovered since using the volume indicator more actively is those, the swings that appear to come out of nowhere and perhaps, you know, cut into an existing profit that we're holding on a trade or, you know, bring us into a loss quickly on a trade where we didn't see it swinging against us. The volume indicator will help you see those swings more in advance. They'll be more, they'll, they'll be, they'll catch you off guard less, which wouldn't that be nice for all of us to have, if nothing else, slightly less stressful trading days, uh, especially in this volatile uh, market environment that we have so far in 2020. And that, you know, I think you would agree isn't going anywhere as far as volatility goes. So if you haven't used a volume indicator to this point in time in your trading arsenal, I think it's a great time to introduce it, especially with this volatility. Uh, and hopefully today's webinar uh, helped you advance a little further in your knowledge on, on how to use a volume indicator in MT4, what types of instruments that, that it might be really effective for. Today we focused on the Canadian dollar, uh, given the environment we're in right now, and I think it can be a really good match for a pair like the US dollar, Canadian dollar. I would also look at pairs like the Australian dollar, US dollar, New Zealand dollar, for those of you that are like ex exotic currencies, South African RAN is really interesting uh, with uh, the volume to, with the volume uh, indicator because those types of those spikes that I showed you on dollar CAD actually happen even more frequently uh, with a pair like US dollar South African RAN. So uh, with that, we're going to wrap it up for uh, today's tutorial. Uh, if you could please kindly remember to follow us on the Forex Boat YouTube channel, that would be phenomenal. We would really appreciate that. And with that, until the next tutorial, thank you for coming in, folks. Look forward to speaking to you soon here from Forex Boat. Take care.